<laughs> All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty the Mirror Search for Who. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as we do, before we get started, we'd just like to thank you guys and, and show our appreciation towards all of you who have supported us over the years. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody who has invested into Amy Young Farms, thank you so much for, for coming together with us and, 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 and being a part of, of that of this project, this great project uh, in Abiyo Kuta. So thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Um, also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Again, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you're new to the platform, please share and please subscribe and like the video. That doesn't cost you anything to do that. Also, go to uh, Amazon.com, buy some books. I got my books. More books are coming. Please support and go buy a book. Yeah, Tyler, where's your where's uh where's your book at? Rent. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everybody, book. make sure you support Tywo too. The books, uh, rent to rent. There you go. Yeah, massive cash during a massive crash. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, which is the purple one, mm -hmm. uh, rent to rent as well, which is landlords, agents, tenants, and all the legal skills you need to consider. So both on Amazon as well. All right. So guys, make sure you go support uh, our queen, Taiwo, as well. Thank make you. Sure you go support. No problem. So everybody, today's topic is fight or flight. That's today's topic, because I keep hearing this vague and abstract dynasty. We're going to sit here. We're going to stay in America. We're going to fight. Uh, but I never when I when we get into details and I ask what's when you say fight, what are you going to do specifically? I never get a clear answer. You know, I, I just I never do. And then the main people who say they're going to fight like I don't see you guys on TV rioting. I just see you behind a computer all day. So, you know, I, what's this fight look like? So is it fight or flight? So then people like myself are like, okay, take your resource, start slowly start taking your resources out of America and investing in Africa. You say I'm running, I'm scared. So you know, I don't I don't understand. So so with that being said, if you're in the if someone's in the chat room that agrees that hey, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna fight, like I want you to come on after we finish our presentation, and articulate how that fight looks like. Like, really, really articulate how that fight looks like. And then when I say, okay, take your resources, if you disagree with me, when I suggest that we take our resources from America and start investing into Africa, tell me why are you against that? You know, because, I mean, this is the issue. Let's, we're black people here in America. Let's, let's deal with the problems. Let's address the issues here in America. Number one, home ownership is at an all-time low. Okay, all-time low. Number two, we're being gentrified out of our neighborhoods. I mean, I mean, number three. Let's say the during the two thousand and eight crisis, uh -huh. wasn't the the Black Americans the most people that were foreclosed? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. We were hit hard, especially here in Atlanta, where I'm at. Like my zip code where I live in Atlanta, I think was the high, was hit with the most mortgage fraud in America. Like my zip code or like the zip codes, the adjacent zip codes around mine here in Atlanta. Like we were hit, we were hit the worst and the hardest. So, wow. I mean, they ran freeways through our community. I mean, it's just, it's so much. So I'm just trying to figure out what's this, the, the fight, you know, that you're going to put up. Because all the fight people are saying we're going to vote for Joe Biden. A lot of them. And it's just like, I just, just, I want you to come on after we finish our presentation. I want you to articulate this fight. And why do you disagree with taking your resources and investing in Africa? I mean, we, we say, I mean, the, some more complaints are that we can't afford America. We don't have any money. Uh, the, the, I think the wealth for black Americans by 2050 is supposed to be at zero. Zero. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I heard. We have discrimination in regards to getting access to loans and capital. So we could acquire real estate. Our real estate in black neighborhoods, the real estate in predominantly black neighborhoods on purpose is devalued than our white counterparts. It doesn't matter if you have me, Taiwo, we keep our yards nice and clean. We're ed college educated. We're working professionals. You know, we're not out here sagging 
and, and gang banging and selling drugs in our community. It doesn't matter. Our neighborhoods are devalued. It's docu- all this is documented. Like it's all documented how the system is rigged. But then, as I say, no matter where you're at in Africa, I don't care where you're at. Values are going up. Meanwhile, in America, if you're in a predominantly black neighborhood, the values are devalued on purpose. But the minute one white hipster moves into your neighborhood, all of a sudden the values go up. Like I'm not lying. I'm, I, I am not lying. I'm serious. I'm serious. I am. This is the way the system's rigged. I know. We have the same thing in the UK. Yeah, yeah. The minute a white hipster moves into your community, the values go up just overnight. Like I, it's just your your neighborhood becomes desirable now. So again, let's just talk about it without getting emotional. How does this fight look like? Because I understand the systematic racism, I get it, but there are other areas uh, in regards to the black community, specifically the black community, where we're just failing and we're behind, and the fighting the system because it's so systematic and it's, the system is doing what the system is supposed to do. How are you going to change that? And if you think voting for Joe Biden is the solution, I just think it's laughable. Like it's 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 just it's a la- it's a laughable. Like it's we've been common. voting. We've been voting for over forty years now. Right, right. As um, I think Lou Major said, we fought to integrate. So when we had our own communities, white people came and burned them down. We didn't have access to the same resources that they had. Like my mom was telling me the story of my grandmother. My grandma, my grandmother had a twin. Her twin passed away when they were little kids. And she said they didn't have access to health care because it's just the way the Jim Crow system was set up. So we fight to integrate our resources, our money, our mind into these neighborhoods. You know, that's what Martin Luther King Jr. fought for. And speed up to 2020, we are still fighting for the same issues or the same access and, 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 and even to, and just to add more insult to injury, we're doing even worse than we were in the, in the 60s before integration. Like we're doing worse. So I just want to know what this fight is. Explain the fight. You know, what are you going to do? Just, just explain it. Like I just want just articulate it to me. How are you going to fight back again? We fought to integrate. Martin Luther King Jr. took a bullet in his head. In Memphis, T- Memphis, Tennessee, a hotel bad balcony, so we could fight to integrate because we thought we were going to get the same access to all these resources that white people had access to. In 2020, about 60 years later, about 60 years later, yeah, about 60 years later, 50, 60 yeah. years later, we're doing worse off than we were before we fought to integrate as a black community. So again, I just explain the fight okay explain the fight and you guys are saying we're being locked out of the economy because you guys don't have access to capital meanwhile you could build your own economy and you have access to a rising economy in africa for the same cost of as a pair of jordans the three or four pair of jordans that you bought you can make an impact in africa not only for you but for your children's children but i'm i'm the crazy one just for pointing that out so, Miss Tywo, introduce yourself. Let mm. everybody know who you are, and let's take it from there. Dennis, um, thank you again for bringing me your show. As an African living in the in the diaspora, living in Europe, raised in Europe, mm-hmm. the same thing that you uh, Black Africans, you know, face in America, we have similar thing. The right. only difference is that the police officers here do not carry guns. That is the only difference we've got. Mm -hmm. When it comes to racism, we experience it all the time. And believe me, the higher you go in the hierarchy, the worse the racism is. As a real estate investor myself, when I, every time I've bought a real estate in a neighborhood, which is not black neighborhood, the first thing that I always get from my neighbors, be to call 
either the police on me, call the council on me, or go around the neighborhood and start petitioning because apparently a black person in the neighborhood will automatically devalue their real estate. Mm -hmm. I get it all the time. So for my brothers and sisters, I have to give a shout out to uh, my friend, the African superstar. Mm -hmm. She's the one that actually gave me the inspiration for the topic, fight or flight. She's mm -hmm. covered it numerous times on her, on her um, channel. Shout out to you, African superstar. So my fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora, you want to fight? I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Let's go all the way in. Let's fight. Mm -hmm. But there, sh there shouldn't be any gray area in your fighting. Mm -hmm. It's fight or die. Freedom or you die. From the 1960s till now has been the gray area. That's the gray area. Right. The gray area is murder, the police brutality, mass incarceration, et cetera, et cetera. That is the gray area. Fight? You need to know that you want to fight. Okay, you want to fight. Know that you will not, you will definitely not taste the freedom of what you're fighting for, probably until the six or seven generation after you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, so Huey, sorry to cut you off. Huey P. Newton wrote a um, book called Revolutionary Suicide, where he basically pointed out what you just said, that the people who do the fighting aren't going to really enjoy the benefits. They're not going to, no. What, they, what is available to you right now, African-Americans? I mean, not just African-Americans, the Caribbeans, every, all the descendants of slavery. Know that when your ancestors were kidnapped from, from Africa, those ancestors dream was to return home. Mm. You are the ones tasting that dream right now, 300 plus years later. You are the ones tasting that dream. So what you are fighting for in America today, I support you, mm -hmm. but you have to bear in mind that you will not be, you definitely are not going to be the one that's going to taste that freedom. Not your grandchildren, not your great great grandchildren, probably six to seven generation after you. Yeah. But for both, but for, for those who would rather say, you know what? Fuck this shit. Fuck it. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. You've got all the opportunities in the world in Africa waiting for you. All right. Because let me tell you something. The system that we are living under right now. We black people, we are the matrix. We are the pillars of that system. That system is based on our oppression. And whatever we do in the West, either we go and take the public transport, we're feeding into that beast. Either we go out to eat in a restaurant, we're feeding into that beast. Either we work, the simple fact of working and you're paying your taxes, right. you're feeding beast right every single thing we do we're feeding to that beast that system of oppression so what do you want to do you want to stay and feed the beast or you want to get the hell out now you're right and you cannot say to me that in africa there's no opportunities africa is overflowing with opportunities especially right now today with the internet. As you said, business, you can, whenever you've got your mobile phone, you've got your phone, you've got everything you need to do, to do business in Africa. That's it, your phone. And right now, there's so many businesses. You don't even, even if you don't want to relocate, okay, you don't want to relocate. There's so many businesses for you to invest in for peanuts. Mm. And you have your passive income coming in. All right. Buying real estate where nobody is gonna come and build the highway through your neighborhood, where nobody's gonna come and burn your your, your community your community down. Or what they were doing and another thing they were doing, Tao, back in two thousand, around two thousand eight and even before then, 
So say your, your grandmother owned a home in a, in a neighborhood and she had that home forever. It started to gentrify. So naturally, value started to go up. So when values go up, the taxes go up as well. So these old people who are paying like maybe $200 a year for taxes, all of a sudden they got to pay like $3,000, $4,000 for tax and they didn't have it. So then they lost their home. God. And we don't, we don't see how all of this is engineered it, it, to right. perpetually, perpetually keep us down. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is coming from somebody who has been successful in business. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, because me and you, I was successful in corporate America. You were. So, mm -hmm. you know, they can't, we, we don't have the, you can't say we're the angry black man and angry black woman because no. I could be at my job right now, balling out, making mm -hmm. six figures a year. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's not, it's not, no matter how high you are in the hierarchy, you are still, they, they will still find a reason to pull you down. They will still find a reason. As a, as a, as a, as a real estate investor, I was told when I, I see all my other landlords, white landlords, you can remortgage your property as much as you want. Every two years, every three years, whatever, pull your equity out, reinvest. When I decided to do the same thing, I told you last time, they told me, well, Miss Orishayomi, you wrote a book about 10 years ago, you know? We didn't like it. We didn't like it. So uh, we see you as a risk. Coming from somebody, as I, I, I went to look at my credit record, my record, I said, Actually, my my record, my credit record is nearly excellent. I mean, out of one thousand, I'm like nine nine six. Mm -hmm. right. So you can't get any more perfect. And well, the reason they gave me was well, mm, you wrote a book ten years ago, so uh, you are not entitled to remortgage your any of your mortgages. No, we don't give it to you. Pull the reason out of the hat somewhere. Mm. So for my brothers and sisters in the diaspora, it can, there comes a time where you just have to say enough is enough because without you around, the beast will starve. All right. Just as an example, you've got a, a, a partner that comes back home from work, beat the shit out of you every day. Mm -hmm. Beat the shit out of you every single day. The moment you pack your bags and leave, he comes back, he or she comes back home, there's nobody to beat. There's nobody to, to batter. Remove yourself from the equation. You either fight back and beat the shit out of one another. All right. If you can't, pack your bags and leave. Let the bits starve. So that's my advice. I'm very angry. I am extremely, extremely angry. I was extremely angry all the way last week. Mm -hmm. I was human. But I then said to myself, hold on. We're living in the matrix. And ask yourselves, who is the matrix? Who is the pillar of that matrix? Globally, is the black bodies. All right. We are. We are the we are the matrix. So what do we do? We unite. We go back to the source. All right. And make things work from there. And that, for me. Is the, is the definition of power. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at everybody on this planet, all the other races, they all go to Africa to replenish themselves. Right. Mm. The ancestors of the Europeans today went to Africa to what? 
to get our ancestors to do the work for them. Right. Today, they are taking our resources. Everything is based on the black bodies. And now we, black Africans in the diaspora, we have the chance to go and put things right. Why should the um, Exxon or Mobil or BP go to Nigeria and be in charge of the oil of my, of my ancestors? Right. They are there because I'm not there. No, you're right. Now, Tawa, what about the, um, you know, people in the chat room, they, they're, they're saying, well, we don't have the money to go. Like, what would be your response to that? Because, guys, me, look, let me say this. Me and Fitzgerald, we are on here every day. Yes, it's not sexy, you know, okay? I know it's not sexy, but me and Fitzgerald are on here every day presenting opportunities that where you could earn an income wherever you're at. I come on again tomorrow with uh, Miss Nikki Cannon, where it's the same thing, where you could pretty much operate your own franchise or distribution center, and it doesn't cost that much to get in. Same thing with Tyro. So we're always presenting opportunities. It's just, it's always, I would say, a stalling tactic. You know, and again, what I do as far as generating income, as far as what me and Fitzgerald talk about and what me and Miss Nikki Candy talk about, it's not, I'm not, it's not sexy, you know, because people always hit me up, Diamonds, where the diamond mines at? Where the gold at? You know, and I'm just like, look, just whatever you're doing now, how about you take that skill to Africa? Don't worry about the diamond mines and the gold later. I mean, it's there, but I mean, come on now. But at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity and resources in it. Listen, people ask me, Dianus, how are you able to travel to Africa so much? My job, I work for a company called Centos. You want to know what I sold? I sold toilet paper and paper towels and soap and floor mats. That's wow. what I sold. So it wasn't sexy, but it afforded me the opportunity to do what I wanted to do. So, again, the opportunities are there. It's just up to you guys to take advantage of them. Like I said, again, I sold toilet paper and paper towels. I, walk, I drove around. Listen, truth, I'm telling the truth. I drove around in my Porsche with toilet paper and paper towels in the backseat selling toilet paper and paper towels for Centos out of the trunk of my Porsche. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not a sexy job, but, again, I drove around in my Porsche selling toilet paper and paper towels. <laughs> so again, it's not sexy, but you have to, you have to really, you, have, you, you're, you should focus on your purpose and the end game. Yeah. How are you yeah. going to get there? So. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> again, in my Porsche, toilet paper <laughs> and paper towels and soap in the back of my Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There you go. So for me, the solution that I bring to my people is, one, you can invest in businesses for peanuts. Right now, um, we've got opportunities. We're working behind the scene on several kind of opportunities that people can tap into. You want to get into the gold industry? There's something that we're, you know, we're working towards something that is possible for you to do so. You want to invest in a farm, you know, on, on the motherland. You want to be working here and then have, you know, interest in a farm on the motherland. You can do that. Actually, we will be presenting some of those opportunities very, very soon to our people. And right now, right now, I'm working with um, uh, uh, a, a tech company based in Nigeria. All the workers are Nigerians. The investors are all Nigerians. And they're looking for uh, investors. It's just like, let's just say Facebook comes to you right now. Mm -hmm. Just starting up. Right now, I don't know how, how much is the, is, the, is, the, is the cost of a share of Facebook. No, I don't know. Go ahead. We have some, there's something similar I'm working on at the moment. I will present that opportunity very soon once we finalize a few things. Because we don't want to come out and then get it stolen from us. So we're doing all the security things at the moment. You can buy into that. Buy a stock, a share of the company, passive income. In the next two, three years, your money is working for you. 
it's coming. And you've got all these opportunities on the motherland that no, that our people don't want to tap into. And a lot of these opportunities, a lot of these business, you know, young people, they have, they have the knowledge of what is going on outside. And when they come to me, when they come to Gaia, Global African Investors, they say, we come to you specifically because we want our people to invest in our companies. We want to work with our people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Guys, hit that like button. Go ahead. The opportunities, the opportunities and the opportunities are endless. So let's introduce to our people other opportunities in real estate. Because right now, with our connections in, uh, in Nigeria, we've made it even easier, better than before, to get into the real estate in, in, uh, in Nigeria. People can get into the real estate right now for less than $700 by yeah. real estate, a condo in Lagos. In Lagos. It's like someone coming to you today and say, for less than $600, you can buy a condominium in uh, Manhattan. Right. 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 But again, it's just people just don't see the opportunities outside of America. America is the end all be all for some reason. I just, I don't get no, it. There's, not, there's nothing, there's nothing in America, I'm afraid. There's nothing in America. You're living in the belly of the beast. There's nothing there. Mm. There's nothing there. And if you think there's something there, well, you know, good luck. And we've got a question in the chat room. Uh, do you know anything about student housing around University of Agriculture in Abiokuta? Do I know about what? Uh, anything about student housing around University of Agriculture in Abiokuta? Yeah, what do you what do you want to know about the student houses? Um, African Wahala had a African Wahala call in uh, in about twenty after we do our presentation. African Wahala call in. Uh, you get you get uh, ask your question. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, you want to go to the presentation? Or? Yes, please, please. I mean, th th this there here is another opportunity that is available to all of us. All the universities in Nigeria, anybody can actually go in there and build student accommodation. That is the, 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 the market is already there, ready for you. You can go put your, put, put yourself together as a group, a group of five, ten, six people, building a student accommodation near any university. It is there. Tap into it. Let's go into the presentation. All right, guys. So we're gonna hop into the presentation uh, and then afterwards we will start taking some calls. But make sure you like, share, subscribe. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Let's see here. So for all our brothers and sisters, this is all about real estate, real estate opportunities in Nigeria. Nigeria is a giant of Africa, as we all know it, with over 200 million population. 2.64% uh, of the world population is in Nigeria. There are plenty of babies being born. Plenty, plenty of babies being born. 52% 50, of the country is urban, 48% is rural. So there's room for those who want to live a village type of uh, existence, a village type of lifestyle. Plenty of room for you to do so. So today I'm going to um, cover Lagos mainly because of the several opportunities that are there. We have the Dangote refinery that's coming up in about two years time. We have the Africa free trade zone that is there. Loads, loads, loads of opportunities happening in Lagos right at the moment. The average age of, of Nigerians is 18 years old, extremely young population, population that is looking and waiting to be employed. So what is the meaning of power? For me, it's about owning your source of income. Nobody's telling you, nobody's giving you a limited amount of salary. You got to live on this. In, 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 in Nigeria, endless source of, uh, source of income. The taxes are so low that 
you are not going to be penalized for having two or three jobs. I remember my mother years ago when she came to the UK, she was she was teach, she was was um, um, doing some teaching, supply teacher, teacher work, and then she needed more money. She went out and take a second job. The second job was taxed at 75%. So even if you want to, in the UK, I'm not sure how things work in America, in the UK, even if you have the ability to have two or three jobs, you are so taxed that you well, are immediately discouraged. Yeah, because because what it does, it puts you in a higher tax bracket. If you Absolutely. have all the jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist in Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. The more you work, the more you make money. The government is not coming to steal your money from you. Mm. Own your source of uh, own your, your shelter. There's no the mortgage situation is so is so unpopular in uh, in in Africa that you buy what you can afford. What your where your money goes, what you buy. The houses are so cheap that having a mortgage for the next twenty years or thirty years doesn't even make any sense. You own your property outright within five years. So let's move to the next slide. Yes. So Lagos, Lagos is the city that just won't stop growing everything. If you're looking to do business, you're looking into making your a, a, a capitalistic, you know, not aggressive capitalism like we have here. You just want to make your money, invest your money and make your money. Lagos is the best place for you to be. You've got the population. You've got the growth. 22 million approximately live in Lagos. And the real estate are still quite affordable. And we're going to show you a few of them right now. So here, if we go to slide number three, yeah, good. Avocado terraces. And you have to bear in mind that in Nigeria, this is how real estate works. People tend to buy off plan. That is the best way to get into it. People tend to buy off plan. And by the time it, the whole estate is developed, all the real estate are all fully paid. They're all fully sold out. So for example, this one is up and coming. By the end of this year, all this estate could be fully um, occupied. So you can still buy into a, a real estate like this, such as this one. So for, for this one, You've got, these are three bedroom houses. Mm. You can have them finished or semi-finished. When you have them semi-finished, it means that you have access to do them the way you want them to be, you want the finishings to be. And right now for this one, you can buy outright if you want for less than uh, 60, uh, 69,000 US dollars. If you want to spread over 12, two, two, uh, 12 months, 24 months, you can do so. And all you need on this one is a small deposit of $2,300. $2,300 deposit, you've got your house. Mm. I'm sure. What is, the, what is the average deposit in, uh, in, uh, in America? Well, it, so we have a program um, I qualify for. It's called FHA. So if you have a certain credit score and you can have proof of income, uh, you could put only 3.5% down of the total uh, price of your house. So like for me, my house was, when I bought it, it's appreciated greatly. When I bought my house in 2014, it was $185,000. And I think only had to put down maybe like four or five thousand dollars to to get in it, get in it. Oh. So and then you spread your mortgage over how many years? <laughs> thirty years. <laughs> thirty years. Okay. Yeah, thirty years. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. Wait, wait. So, so I'm paying like my hundred eighty five thousand dollar house with 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 the mortgage is probably like. 200 is like maybe close to 300,000 something or, you know, um, 200, I, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. It's spread over so 30 years. A double for the original price. All right. I don't think it's that bad because my interest rate is 3%. So it's low, which isn't that bad, but still, you're still 
paying the bank for yeah. your home. So, yeah. But that, that's just how things are done here in America. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. Is it, hold on, I it's Camberwell. 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 Above that. Above. You've gone oh. way. Yeah, that one. Yes. Okay. Sorry, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Camberwell. Here you go. So here, and another thing for all our listeners, all these real estate I'm showing you, there are videos of them on our on our YouTube page, Global African Investors Alliance YouTube page. We're always putting in updates. So we usually put in updates from when they're doing the groundworks to when they are doing the foundation to pretty much every two months, we put an update of what is going on on each of the locations. So all the videos of all this real estate are on there for you to see. So this one, for example, Camberwell, you can get a one bedroom apartment for, um, for 25,000 US dollars paid outright, one bedrooms. That is dirt cheap. Right. And this is in the heart of Lagos. So which means that the rental income you're gonna get from this, the next two years, especially when Dangote refinery opens up. Oh, okay, this is a GRA. Yeah, that is, yeah. oh, wow. All of this, all of these real estates are all around the, uh, the, the, the target markets for rentals is the Dangote um, employees. Mm -hmm. So which means that this one that you're buying for 11 million, within the next five years, your tenants have finished paying for it. Your tenants have finished paying for it. So let's go to the next slide. That is Fairfield apartment. Yeah, let's go to, yep, next slide. Yeah, there you go. Fairfield apartment, again, this one has been built. I have a lot of clients that bought into this development. Mm -hmm. And a one bedroom apartment is for less than, is like $16,000. Mm. With just 3.5 million deposit, which is about eight thousand us dollars deposit down you can spread right. your payment over the next 12 months or 24 months and if you go to the next slide you can look at show them the the environment architecture of what people will be getting and in such an estate you can have you can do either long term have a tenant there for long term two years They'll pay you rent upfront, or you can have short term. And you don't even need to be there. The team of Gaia will manage the real estate for you. Mm. So we're not asking you, you know, a sacrifice that is unaffordable. These are these are opportunities that we're offering for the African diaspora. The West is not all. The West is not all. Let's move to the next one, Goldstone. Again, Goldstone. This one is almost completion uh, or completed. You can still buy one bedroom apartment here for $24,000. Paid over, spread it over the next 12 months. Deposit down for $8,000. Mm. Have a look if you want to see the architecture. I mean, these mm. are things that. You, 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 how much would that would this cost in Manhattan, in New York? No, oh, millions. 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 Mm. The mm. lifestyle, the lifestyle that we cannot afford here. Africa offers that to us at a fraction. Mm -hmm. At a fraction. And then you've got 24 7 sunlight. Let's move to the next one, Moonstone. Yeah, Moonstone. Again, this one is up and coming. 
been built. It will be ready in the next 12 months. Again, one bedroom flat, you can get it for 7.5 million naira, 17,000 US dollars. Your deposit on this one is 2,300 US dollars. 2,300 US dollars deposit on a, on a condo. And then you spread your payment over the next 12 months to 20, 24 months. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the next one, Sunstone. This is the newest from this developer, Sunstone. This one, your deposit that they're asking is less than $700. Deposit on a condo. It doesn't get any cheaper than this. 700 US dollars. And these are the things that with, um, Af uh, with, the, uh, with Gaia, we go directly and negotiate with these developers. Ways, different ways to get the diaspora involved. Because we get, we hear all the time, Africa is not welcoming. This is too expensive. That is too expensive. I mean, we've literally, this is the red carpet that the African, the, the diaspora has been asking us for. This right. is the red carpet. You put on a deposit for less than 700 US dollars on a, on a, on a real estate. And you can pay over the next five to 10 years with tiny little interest, interest is even is so below what you get here that it's insignificant. Mm. But but Tom, what will happen? They'll they'll come up with a new excuse. Well, they ain't got hardwood floors. This is what we can deliver, semi finish for you, so you can put in whatever finishing you want. <laughs> we give you the carcass, we give you the carcass, and then you can do the finishing as you want. <laughs> so we, we've, thought, we, we've thought about all the excuses that people can come up with. There's no excuses here. I don't like the tiles, don't worry. You can, do, you can choose your own tiles. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like, okay, we're going to give you the bare front. You can do whatever you want with your front yard. <laughs> Everything is there. Oh, I want, uh, I want a, uh, um, a, a digital, you know, living, a smart living. Here you go. You've got a smart living, Urban Prime. Urban Prime, if you want, if you want smart living, Urban Prime, this is what they do. Everything they deliver is tech. You remember last time when I came on your show, I was showing you the of the, the Prime One. Right, oh, right. Mm -hmm. Sold out. Oh wow. Absolutely sold out. So we've got the that we've got the Urban Prime two and three right now that is still available. And those ones are gonna be sold out as well completely because Urban Prime Three, Prime, uh, Prime Three, for example, you can get one bedroom for twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars, and that is a smart house smart apartment mm. where everything everything is money is is controlled from your mobile phone for two, for less than thirty thousand dollars so you know it is there and then the deposit on this one is like six thousand nine hundred six thousand nine hundred dollars less than seven thousand dollars deposit on a smart home So let's go to the next one, Vantage Court. Vantage Court, again, some people have asked me, well, I don't like condos. I don't like to have someone living above me. Here you go, you've got a house in Lagos. Deposit for less than 2,300 pounds deposit for a whole house. The video, the video of everything is on our, on our YouTube page. You can see the environment, the neighbors, what's going on what it looks like, three bedrooms with four facilities. All the rooms are en suite. And this one can be delivered finished or semi-finished. So you can have your own finishing on this one. So in Abeokuta, I know that I've heard some people, well, why are you always focusing on Lagos? Well, I'm not always focusing on Lagos. I, you know, Abeokuta is not Lagos. It's about less than two hours drive from Lagos. Mm -hmm. And 
you 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 can either choose to be in the city Bose city center of Abeokuta, or you can drive half an hour, 40 minutes out of the city center, and you are in a village type of environment where you can literally, right now, we are, um, um, we've allied ourselves with uh, a, a, a real estate company over there called Sweet Estate, and they've delivered three bedrooms, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, houses, for less than six thousand two hundred US dollars, finished. If you go down, you can see somebody who wants to live in a village type environment. So this is a, a, an estate that is just developing. So you can see the carcasses. Some people want to have the carcasses; they can finish anything they can. They want to do what, well later on. Here are the carcasses. You can take off the roof of the house, build another another level. It's yours. You can put another. You see, you see the environment. You are in a completely serene, peaceful environment. And in this estate, there's only twenty houses available there, not more than twenty. So for those people who want to have a, 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 a you know. A remote, a remote kind of um, lifestyle. You want to be farming your own land. You want to be, you know, among your own people, like-minded people. Here is an option for you. And for less than ten thousand dollars, you have, you know, something, a, a, a house that is fully finished for you, ready to move in. So, um, you know, again, you know, power is not something that you earn. It's something that is taken. Go out there and claim it. Claim your legacy, what belongs to you. And right now, for those of us that are people that want, that desperately want to move to Africa, especially Nigeria, I, I, I focus on Nigeria because Nigeria is an English-speaking country. So it's very easy for you to just adapt. You want to move to Nigeria, you're ready. Perhaps you've got a business. If you have a business in the in America or, 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 or in, in Europe that you've been running for at least two years and you want to move to Nigeria and you can show us that you've been running this business for two years, we will help you, we will waive our fees. You can see up there, look at our fees. Eight and a half grand is our fees. We will waive that fee and we will help you relocate. Mm. Sounds like a good deal to me. If you if you literally you're saying enough is enough, I'm done. I want to get the hell out of here. I've got a business that I'm running here. I want to move with my business. We will help you. Now let me ask this: Will this, will this include also someone wants to all their furniture that they have here in America or the UK? They want to ship it. So will you help with like import and? Uh, importing their items and getting through customs and all that. Yeah, I mean, shipping all your stuff. You can even, if you can, if you want to even take your whole house with you, if you can lift your house and go, we can we can do that. Shipping is very easy. You just okay. hire a container, mm -hmm. two containers, you put all your stuff in there, we ship it. Okay. So when, if you can show us that you have a business in, in you've been running your business, for at least 24 months over there, and you want to move your business, you want to move everything to Nigeria and starve the beast completely, we will help you, we will assist you. Mm. So for my people, don't put the excuses forward, i.e. African leaders are these, or the roads are like these, there's not 24 hours electricity, blah, 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 blah. Those are just excuses. Mm. And then you say, uh, there you go. Miss Towell's contact information, everybody as well. Go ahead. Uh. There you go. Yeah, get in touch with us. 
email us in our website is ekabo.africa, which means welcome.africa. Email is info at globalafricaninvestorsalliance.com. Email us. But please don't email us with um, the idea of using us as Google. There's so <laughs> many information out there. Because I have people that email and asking or telling me, I want, I want to invest in Africa. Okay, that is very, very vague. It's like me calling you and say, I want to invest in, in, in America. Where exactly do you want to invest in Africa? Mm -hmm. I want to invest in Nigeria. Okay, cool. Which area? What is your budget? What is your plan? Please don't come, don't come to us expecting us to, to convince you to come to Africa or to come to Nigeria. We're not here to convince you. You have to have made up your mind that you want to come and then we can assist you. All right. All right. Thank you, uh, Mike V, uh, for the super chat. Thank you so much. Let's see here. Let's get back on here. All right. African, uh, African Wahala, I'm going to send you the link right now. If you guys want to call in, we'll take a couple calls. Let's see here. African Wahala, I'm sending you the link right now. Yeah, someone was saying shipping a car. Yeah, people, we ship cars from America all the time. Mm -hmm. You can ship then, uh, Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Okay, cool. So, you know, there's no excuses. So we, Gaia, Global African Investor, we're here to literally... We're rolling out the red carpet for our people. Those who are ready to move, we're here for you. We're here for you. Because right now, as, a, as an African, when I watch, when I see what is going on in America, it touches home. It touches really, really, really touches home. And I'm saying, you know, enough is enough. You need to understand what is your contribution. Ask yourself, what, what am I contributing to my own suffering? And you realize that actually everything is based on your suffering. Right. Everyone everything who's super is, chatted, thank you for the super chats. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Okay. Everything is based on our suffering. So, you know, do you want to continue feeding it or do you want to extract yourself from it? And as I said, very soon, we, Gaia is going to be presenting a series of business opportunities to everybody. We want to invest in farming, corporation, farming as a group, we've got that. We want to inv invest in um, small SMEs, we've got it. We want to invest in uh, student accommodation, we can put that together. And right now, I'm working, we're working with a hospital in Lagos. They want to bring back people in the medical industry, doctors, nurses, healthcare, want to bring them back home, offer, offer them opportunities, offer them jobs. That is in the works at the moment. Mm. Mm. Guys, again, make sure you hit that like button, you guys. Please hit that like button. I sent the link out to African Wahala and Black Ambassadors. And Jenna, if Jenna, if you're watching, in fact, let me text Jenna. Uh, Jenna, if you're watching by a chance, I sent the link out to you uh, as well. Um, so, guys. So, guys, once again, uh, please hit that like button. Please um, share and subscribe as well. And we're waiting for you guys to call in. Let me text Jenna real quick, see where she's at. Go ahead. And the thing is, getting out of the belly of the beast has never been easy. It has never been this easy. The road is there. It's there. It's so easy. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. And those of us who wants to know about mining, about gold mining, about this mining, well, you're not going to know about it until you come down. Right. Until you comment and speak with the chiefs, the local chiefs, 
Because you know what? The local chiefs would rather work with you than with the Chinese. That's what you don't know. That's what you don't realize. They want to work with us. Uh, Black Ambassador, go ahead, brother. Hey, right, what's going on, everybody? Thank you. Thank you for the time. A great presentation. I love the connection of actual links on the continent. So I great. So uh, I was looking at one of the properties, a couple. I've also seen Urban Prime. I checked that out previously. Uh, do you know Imperial Vista? It's by Seven Halls. It's in Abuja. It's been a property I've been trying to connect to and try to get. I got the information, but mm -hmm. I would love to have somebody on the ground to assist me with due diligence. Uh, I definitely want to see the deal through. I've been connecting with a couple people. So I did send you an email just through your actual website. So I just wanted to follow up and then uh, get some more information on just a couple other things like that. But I yeah. definitely want to get something ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, uh, we have a few uh, connections in Abuja. Okay. Uh, but with the developer that you've just mentioned, we are not in connection with them simply because um, what, the people I work with are mm -hmm. the people that have vetted myself. I Got know it. that, you know, they, they, they will be, there's no uh, 411 or whatever, you know, behind. So the people yeah. that I bring to, to the market are the people that I've done business with and I'm still doing business with them. So um, I, wouldn't, I, don't, I don't have that connection with that particular developer. Okay. If okay. In Lagos, then you know. Then you got me. I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> okay. Then I hit you up about that too. Um, also, I wanted to do so. Abuja, would there be a possibility where you could, uh, you have con some connections over there that we could build or for something like this? In Abuja. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The reason why I don't really, you know, focus on Abuja is mm -hmm. because of the you know, the, the tribalism issues that are still going on in, in Nigeria. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so Abuja is um, is uh, is the Fulani Aousa, you know, uh, land. So I focus more on the Yoruba land and then the Igbo land as well. So uh, th those areas, I know that, you know, the laws don't tend to change overnight. So <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah, in Abuja, it's a little bit, you know, I, I wouldn't because I don't have any relations over there. I don't, I don't know the, you know, any elders. I don't know, you know. I just, you know, it's just, I, I just would rather just yeah. not get involved in that, really. Okay, hey D, can I ask one more question? Is it okay with you? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go all ahead. right, thanks, thanks. So I've been putting together. I mean, I got all the information I need, but I usually like to get information from people that are like on ground, no Nigeria versus yeah. just online. So uh, I wanted to go out and also start my business media company. I have one in Kenya already, but I wanted to do one in Nigeria because uh, specifically as a production house. And I wanted to focus first on real estate. I think like the building and construction the quality is great as compared to the rest of the places in Africa. And uh, it's just the marketing about, you know, uh, real estate photos, real estate videos, 3D imaging to better deliver it to clients that are like international. Plus, of course, in the continent. So I wanted to ask you, what did you think as far as how that would work? Most of the time when I tell people, Media, they're like, oh, a lot of people is media. It's already flooded. But I'm like, no, no, no. I'm a production house. I'm the wow. technical aspect versus I don't want to be a superstar. I don't want to be a director. I don't want to be an actor. I want to produce great actual photos and content that advertise the great properties that are built in Nigeria. I mean, they're amazing. But a lot of times you go to, to online and you've seen it and it's not great pictures, it's not great imaging. So all they need is, you know, great marketing. I think I can this, this, this is the kind of things that we're looking for. Okay. This is kind of, this is a kind of, you know, um, uh, 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 how can I say investment? I, we will find actually people that will invest in your business. Oh, but really? If you were to be in Lagos, for example, you were in Lagos, no, I was looking in Abuja, and then I, and then people were like, "No, Lagos," and then I didn't know which one to go to because I know Abuja was like newly built, so I didn't know if there was more construction in Abuja or a uh, Lagos. So I just wanted your expertise to point me in the right direction and hopefully facilitate. I'm saying, 
Well, Legos is even though Legos is not the capital, Legos is still the economic engine of okay. Africa. I mean, from not just Nigeria, but Africa. So, you know, if you're into politics and stuff, like I guess maybe Abuja, but outside of that, man, if you're trying to do business, man, Legos is definitely my honest opinion where to go. Yeah, Lagos. You want to go to Lagos. At least yeah. to start, you want to be in Lagos. And perhaps once you know the ground, you know the business, then you can travel around the country and cover. Because once okay. you visit yourself in Lagos, you will get people that will fly you out from one state to another to come and work for them. And this but is also... Go ahead. But uh, Lagos uh, will be the place that you want to start. Okay, so I can actually contact you also via your website because this is something I've already built, got the business plan. I was already about to go. I had a contact with an immigration lawyer to set up my paperwork to make my documentation, you know, of course, legit while I'm there because I found out I flew in Kenya. Then I tried to do it, and then I dealt with too many problems during right. the aftermath, but it was possible. So nevertheless, I want to just make sure that I'm going in the right direction. I've got my, you know, thumb on the right pulse and i'm figuring this out right because my main thing is real estate and business business to business just doing actual like i said video content for commercials uh promos for social media videos uh, also commercials on the big scale what, what is your time scale for being in nigeria when do you <laughs> well i just quit my job so i was like forget it i'm going to africa so Actually, <laughs> I try to you know get in contact with the Nigerian embassy, but they're taking a little bit break right now. Uh, COVID, yeah. so I can't get my thumbprint done right now. So I have oh. to wait to get my thumbprints, and I had to come stateside to actually get my visa. I couldn't be overseas. Usually, I'm overseas. Let me tell you something right now. If you're on the ground in Nigeria, mm -hmm. we, you will have a business as one of your first businesses. We will give you literally give you the business. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Our, all our media, all our media um, platform. So it is important. Sorry? Uh, no, the, the production house would be a great proponent. It would be a great business out there in Nigeria because all I hear is it's flooded. It's flooded. The market's flooded. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, okay. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be no filmmaker. I just want to be a production house. I could process videos, uh, process movies, TV shows. And like I said, I know I can do real estate really good. So that's where I was going to start as far as my meat and potatoes, as far as what I was going to actually build the structure with. Absolutely. Don't, you know, when, when you're ready, you know, Keep us in the loop. Keep us in the loop because no, I'm gonna contact you. I'm gonna yes, please. See, don't just say you're, you know, uh, the black ambassador. I believe you are a friend of uh, my friend Gina as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Africa yeah. superstar. You got uh, an African yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I love what you guys are doing. I love the presentation and the connections you guys are coming with. So I just really want to build. I already have a property in Zanzibar. I did the same thing. So it's just not talk. Oh, really so brother, but how are you? Uh, did you acquire the property in Zanzibar? Did you acquire it through your business or did you acquire it? So, no, no, no. I did it in my name. So just wow. recently, recent, yeah, just recently, uh, uh, Zanzibar came out with legislation that allowed foreigners to really? invest now, specifically with certain really? in Zanzibar. Yeah. So it's like oh. this project in Fuma Town are the uh -huh. first ones to be actually invested by foreign investors, which yeah. is quite new to them in Zanzibar especially. Uh, oh, it's man. a different initiative. Because when I was in Zanzibar, because I was looking at acquiring property in Zanzibar too, but they were saying you can't as an individual, but you can't. No, you got to do it in the name with a company. Yeah, so you did it with a company. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Before, that's what it Before. was. Before you okay. had to get now, and buy it through the company. But now you, Dinah Slim, got your name on it. You got a one-bedroom apartment and everything, or whatever the really? development project was building. I will send you the link because I do have all the information and I actually showed it on the video, walking people step by step on how to go through the process. Real cheap too, real cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just focused on Nigeria and, and Sierra okay. Leone. But at one time, like Zanzibar, like even, even then, like once I get established in Nigeria and Sierra Leone, yeah. I'll, circle, I'll, I'll probably circle back around to Zanzibar, but, uh, but yeah, but that I didn't know that. That's good news. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, great news, and I want to get one in Nigeria because you know uh, I did my little you know DNA test, and I'm house in Fulani, so I'm <laughs> like I gotta go to Nigeria, and uh, this is what I'm looking forward to. So I definitely. <laughs> 
the, thank you for the information. D, shout out to you doing your thing. I don't want to take everybody else's time up. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll get in contact with you, and I'm not going to use you as Google, all right? <laughs> thank you. Thank real, you. Real all right. All right. It's okay. All right. Uh, African Wahala. Wahala. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Tyro. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yes, um, I, I dropped a question in the chat room earlier asking about your knowledge on um, um, student accommodation around University of Ab Agriculture at Belkuta. Yeah. Because I know, I know you have a lot of um, initiatives going on in Abeokuta, right? Yeah, we have quite a few businesses going on in Abeokuta. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I, I actually schooled there for a while. Okay. So, yes, yes. And I acquired a piece of land around the university, mm -hmm. but I haven't had the opportunity to go back and develop and, you know, get it started. But I just want to ask um, what you think about such an investment, especially when it comes to when it pertains to student accommodation and how viable you think it will be for the landlord. Okay. My question is, when was, when was the time that you, you, you went there, you schooled there? When was this? Oh, I schooled there between 2003 and 2009. Okay, okay. So how was the student accommodation? Were you still in the student accommodation? How was it? You know, while I was there, um, okay, I'll give you the dynamics of the population of the school. So back then, there were only... 10,000 students. Okay. Right. But right now, the university is no longer a university of agriculture. Now it's a university of, um, I believe they have arts, commerce, and other programs, not only agricultural and science based programs. Yep. So there is a higher population of students. And I believe there are more buildings in that area in terms of student accommodation. But mm -hmm. back then when I was there, there were only two buildings right outside the gates of the university in front. And the first one is a, a four-story build. Actually, both of them are four-story buildings, right? And um, rent back then was about um, 90,000 Naira per year yep. per room per for room. a self-contained. Mm -hmm. And the guys that shared bathrooms and kitchens they paid about i believe it was thirty thousand naira per year okay. so um back then it looked like a very good investment and then i i traveled abroad i've been living abroad for a long time i made some money in 2015 i bought a piece of land but then when i checked google maps to see what that area looks like it's it's really really developed like they are probably they were probably five more buildings in that area. Yeah. So yeah. I mean particularly um, in, in Abel Puta, which which is the reason why um it's uh, one of the main key areas that we focus on in Gaia. Um the Abel Puta, the land is still very very cheap, very affordable and is growing exponentially exponentially. So if you were to have you know you can have a group of investors together to build a student accommodation. Because as far as I know, last time I was there, um, students were living far, far, far away in, in a, with, with landlords, you know, because they couldn't find accommodation around the university. So if you want to build a student accommodation, say, absolutely, yeah, go for it. Go for it. It's something you would advise anybody to get into? Oh, yeah, around the universities in Nigeria, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about farm lands? What do you think about having a farm in a in a rural area in maybe somewhere maybe on the outskirts of Abeokuta or somewhere in Oyo State? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm I'm also considering um the potential of Okay, I don't need to say this. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say this part because that's a little bit negative. That's why I'm not going to say. Um, but, you know, there are so many things to consider when going into 
those types of investments. And yeah. I was just wondering. Farming, you know, it's yeah. one of the investments I'm, uh, I'm, we're doing at the moment with yeah. uh, some of our groups. Um, you know, you can't go wrong in farming, especially right now where the Nigerian government is pushing and investing in farming. It's mm. helping small and medium-sized farmers to get into farming. And, um, you know, the bigger you, you, you are, the more you get, you know, assistance from, from, the, from the government. So farming today, anywhere in Africa, actually, is, um, is, uh, is that is one of the best businesses to go into. Because right now, too many African countries are importing food from all over the world, which mm. we need to be to be doing. So uh, a lot of African countries are looking to be food sufficient. So they are pushing into farming. So yeah, farming, you can't yeah, go wrong I, here. And you mentioned or you say is a brilliant, yeah. they've got very, very good filter land. Very, very cheap. We've got land in or your state on our website. Farm land. Okay. Do, do you help people acquire la farmlands in Abel That's Kutab? what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. Okay, just to, just to add the final points. So um, when it comes to farming, there is this huge company called Friesland. It's a it's a Dutch company. They are into the production of milk and dairy products. Friesland, Friesland. I can't pronounce it properly. Friesland. So um, Friesland incentivizes farmers by providing them with um exotic cattle breeds which makes milk production more efficient and then Friesland what they do is they go back to the farmers that they donated those cattle to and they get they collect milk from them which they use to produce their products the dairy products so yes there is a lot of incentives for people that want to get into farming from the government and from big um, multinational companies as well. Yeah, I just thought yeah, I added that. I wouldn't advise any, you know, collaboration with, uh, you know, multinational um, companies mm -hmm. because most of the time, they, they, the best interests of the people is not what they that that pushes them. You know, it's more like profit. So if a, a big company is coming, like Monsanto, coming to Nigeria and wants to push their fertilizers on people, you know, they will give us everything that we want until we become stuck. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. You know, you want to start a farm, find, start your own organic farm on the motherland. You don't need to have external um, uh, uh, investors because. I, you know, you, we, we've been there before. We've been there before. So I, you know, you want to start your farm? Farm with your own people. The government is there to help you. If you, you know, you can approach banks, Nigerian banks, they will help you as well. You don't really need to have the support of, um, of the, you know, Western corporations. So I don't support those ones at all. And I wouldn't advertise them either. All right. Well, brother, thank you very much for your time. Oh, yeah, thank no you problem. for having me on, Dinas. No problem. Yeah. Peace, brother. Peace. Thanks. All right, Jenna. Uh, close it. Close us out. Hey, <laughs> hi, Tawo. Hi, Prince Dinas Samir. Long time, guys. Okay. I've been laying low, brother. You smoked me out. You <laughs> smoked me out. <laughs> okay. You smoked me out. I've been taking a hiatus. <laughs> What's up? Search for a huru. How are you guys doing? Um, <laughs> uh, what's what, what? What is the topic? I'm sorry. I literally no, no, just well, came well, in the okay. room. I, 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 was, I was bullied. I was bullied by all of my friends to come today. Okay. <laughs> you gave us the idea of the topic, African superstar. Fight or flight? Oh, we're talking about we're talking about fight or flight. Okay. Absolutely, girl. Um, <laughs> that is no um, problem. You covered it on your on your channel. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tawo. Yeah, big shout out. Thank you, guys. Thank you again, Prince Dinah Samir. Big shout out to the Search for Huru family, the African superstar family. I know you guys are here. Um, essentially, the topic was something that I discussed following George Floyd's, you know, violent mur murder. And I basically said that in a life-threatening situation, you are scientifically programmed to have one or the other. You either going to fight 
you know, for your life or you're going to you're going to fly. You're going to get to safety. You're going to run away, whatever you want to call it. Um, and for me and so many other members of the diaspora, we have chosen to fly because the fight in America is futile. Our people have been uh, fighting, so to speak, for centuries. Every time we gain ground, every time we make progress, uh, there are systematic practices put in place to destroy our progress. And so therefore it makes much more sense to try something that we have not attempted um, in, in a large fashion, which is migrating back to the motherland or establishing ourselves there. So I think what I'd like to say specifically to search for Uhuru viewers is that it's okay to admit that you don't want to fight. I personally don't believe that I was born to perpetually be in a fight because my skin is dark. So I choose to explore other options. Does that mean Africa's perfect? No. Does that mean that we're going to have to be innovative? Yes. Does that mean we're going to have to go through cultural differences and, you know, try to uh, reestablish ourselves? Absolutely. But to me, I'd rather take that opportunity than continue to fight an uphill battle and potentially lose my life. I'm pretty sure if we go back and ask George, hey, George, you know, <laughs> did you did, do you want to keep fighting in America? Was it worth you getting killed by them police officers like that? Now your kids are orphans, you know, now you're gone, a young man dead, is it worth it? I'm pretty sure he'd be willing to reevaluate that decision in retrospect. So those of us that are in a position, those of us are proactive, it's something that we should entertain. For the rest of y'all that wanna keep fighting, go right ahead, we're not begging you to come. But to some of you that are on the fence or, you know, you, you, you just have been trying to figure out what are some alternatives, consider the motherland. Uh, many of us are providing you resources, you know, such as Tawo, such as Dinah, such as Black Ambassadors, African Tigress, Phil Scott, me, um, to help you in your transition to the motherland. So, so I'm a little out of breath. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in motion. I'm going to the train station right now. So <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thank you for calling by. Thank you. Really yes, yes, yes. Big shout out to you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. So go ahead. Fight or flight. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. Whichever decision you made, I'm with you. But I say that you have your power when you go back to the source. Go and claim your land. Go and claim the African resources. Go and get your power back. Absolutely. So here you go. All right, Tom. How can how can people reach you if they want to contact you? Yeah, you can um go to our website, sorry, our YouTube page. We have tons and tons of videos on there of mm -hmm. uh, the you know real estate development that we 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 work with. All these people, all these developers have been vetted by us. I personally invest with those developers as well. So uh, look at the videos. If you're interested in any you know, development, get in touch with us by emailing us at info at globalafricaninvestorsalliance.com. Info at globalafricaninvestorsalliance.com. You can go on our website, ecabo.africa, to see all our real estates, the land we sell, the, uh, the condominiums we sell, the houses we sell. And if you're in business and you want to bring your business to Nigeria and you want us to help you relocate your entire family, your business, send us an email to business at globalafricaninvestorsalliance.com. Business at globalafricaninvestorsalliance.com. We will help you. As I said earlier on, we are putting together a lot of business opportunities in the background, which we will be presenting to you very, very soon opportunities to invest in different kind of farming, either it's in Nigeria or, or outside Nigeria, South Africa, you're working in you know, South Africa, Ghana, Malawi. We've got different kind of investment going on in the background. We're going to be presenting them to you very, very soon. Um, you want to invest in IT, tech, whatever. We are working on a few, a few options as well. We're going to be introducing them to you very, very soon. So 
yep, Africa is home. Uh, come back home. Don't be, don't don't get yourself killed in in uh, in America, and especially for those of you who have sons. If you have right. sons, get them out. Mm. That's my yeah. advice. Mm. I agree. I agree. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Like, share, and subscribe. Go grab a book. Go on Amazon. Grab a book. Until next time, family. Dynasty Mirror Search for Huru. Queen Taiwo. Thank you. Alori me. Alori me. <laughs> uh -huh. Until next time. Peace. Thank you. <laughs>